Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryeni, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's up guys, it's Ryan and welcome to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 132 now guys. I've got five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. So let's just jump straight into it. Starting off at our number five spot, we have the Soul Rip Conjuration spell. Now this mod adds an extremely powerful master conjuration spell to the game. Now the mod page reads that this spell is called Soul Rip and is essentially just a spell version of the Soul Tear Shout at its full power. However, the spell can be considered even more powerful as it not only kills the target, but it absorbs all of the remaining health, magicka, and stamina and transfers it all to you. This is accompanied by the usual soul trap reanimation effects of the soul tear shout. The magicka cost is incredibly high, so it can be casted by only the most powerful dragonborn, not to mention its 5 second long charge time, so this spell can be very draining to use. But consider yourself warned. I'm sure this spell will be considered much too strong for general use, but I decided that the effort required to be able to cast the spell should be rewarded, if one were to reach those perks. Now the spell can be purchased from Finnis, he's the conjuration trainer at the College of Winterhold. For a pretty hefty price though, or alternatively it can be found on the Corpse of the Reaper, an optional boss found on the Soul Cairn, as it was always felt that there should be a little bit more of a reward whenever you go and battle him. So now I'm going to be demonstrating what this spell actually does, so I've got this giant here- oh! <laughs> oh Jesus. Alright hold on guys let me just- oh, oh sorry guys let me just get up here real quick uh, let me just- oh, guys come on! Come on now, let's- guys, hey, hey, stop it, hey, get away, <laughs> oh my- no! <laughs> That's it, now you've done it. Get a load of this. So like I said, it absorbs all of the enemy's health, magicka, and stamina, and transfers it over to you. And then it also makes it so you reanimate them so they fight by your side. It's a very powerful spell, and that's why it falls under the master level conjuration spells, and it's really fun to use, and that's why it comes in at our number 5 spot, so I'd recommend downloading the Soul Rip conjuration spell mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the Witcher 3, Karanthir Armor with Skirt. This has the special Karanthir Armor from the Witcher 3, and the armor set can be crafted at the Skyforge. Each piece requires one Daedric Heart, two Leather Strips, and three Ebony Ingots. And it also requires the player to have the Daedric Smithing perk to craft it. The armor can also be tempered for one Ebony Ingot. So with this mod only adding the one set of the badass Karanthir armor, I do think that it's worth mentioning in this video because The Witcher 3 is such a fun game to play and seeing one of the most badass armor sets from The Witcher 3 ported over to Skyrim, it's really interesting to see it play in this world. So if you want to just have your character play as Karanthir in a different realm that is a complete separate universe than The Witcher, then this is definitely the mod for you and it's very well put together and the armor is very high quality, so that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number 4 spot, so I'd recommend downloading it. Coming in at our number 3 spot we have the Beffer and Nefer mod. This is a weapon mod that adds two powerful swords from a French dark fantasy comic. Beffer and Nefer, one for good and one for evil. The almighty twin swords can now be yours. Beffer is considered the good sword, it has a unique look and enchantment, light peace and it reflects spells while blocking like Spellbreaker. It also absorbs magicka, fortifies health, and allows you to resist fire. This can be crafted at any forge under the elven category. Moving on to Nefer, Nefer is the evil sword. It has a unique look and enchantment as well, which is pain and destruction. It absorbs health and burns enemies. It can also be crafted at any forge under the ebony category. Both Beffer and Nefer have two unique variations. There's the good sword which is one-handed, and then the good sword which is two-handed. And then that's the same for the Nefer, it has a one-handed version as well as a two-handed version, so if you want to dual wield them you can, or if you want to just have one giant sword of each category, you can also do that. There's no requirements for this mod because it's standalone, so you should be able to just install this and add it right into your load order. And using these weapons, they're extremely powerful and very badass as well, I think they look great, especially with these new unique textures. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number 3 spot so I'd recommend downloading the Beffer and Nefer mod. 
Coming in at our number two spot, we have Growl, Were Beasts of Skyrim. Now I know you guys are really gonna like this one because Growl is a lightweight werewolf overhaul. It offers a much smoother were beast and combat experience, scaling, removed perks, synergies between beast and mortal forms, and many quality of life improvements, making were beasts a viable choice for your character. All of this without taking over or imbalancing your game. Now when it comes to actually having the beast blood, you now have a 100% resistance to disease, a 50% weakness to fire, silver weapons now inflict 20 extra damage towards you, and at night you have a 20% chance to take the form of the beast. You also get an extra ability based on your race. Whenever you turn into the were beast, you now have infinite carry weight, you're immune to fall damage, you're immune to disease, and you deal 10 plus one character level base damage up to level 50. You also get 60 plus six character level base armor, also up to level 50. When it comes to your magic resistance, you get 25% plus 1% for each character level up to level 50 as well. Your health is also increased by 50 points and you have 100% of base magicka transferred to stamina instead. You also move 15% faster and regenerate 20 of maximum stamina per second. You can also feed on humanoids and animal corpses to restore 50 health and extend the duration by 30 seconds. And then there's Bloodthirst, which is where Were Beast claws do 10 bleed damage and heal 10 life. When it comes to the Were Beast quality of life improvements, you can now hold down the button to revert form so you can change back. You can also use containers, collect ingredients, and loot corpses by feeding. Activating Beast form now also suspends your shout cooldown, and special attacks no longer have cooldowns. It's also important to note that Were Beast scale with your highest weapon skill and your highest armor skill, and eating corpses level those skills. When it comes to Howling, the vanilla Skyrim perk bonuses have been included into Howls, and new perks have been added to improve them. Now whenever talking about the Werewolf perk tree, it has been expanded from 8 to 19 perks, which completely overhauls everything about being a werewolf in general. There's also several new ways to get started on your journey to becoming a beast. Like in the vanilla game, you can still progress through the companion's quest line, or you can consume the rare ingredient called Were Beast Blood available as loot from high-level alchemy vendors. You can also experience a dream vision by sleeping outdoors under a clear sky at night. Now I know a lot of you guys in the comment sections of previous videos have been asking me to cover more werewolf mods and cover more overhauls that actually have to do with the beast form, and I think this is probably one of the best ones that I've covered. It covers almost all areas of being a werewolf and expands it entirely, and I think it's going to stay on my load order as well. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number 2 spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Growl Were Beasts of Skyrim mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Bat of Skyrim. I got a lot of requests to actually cover this mod in some previous top five mod episodes, so here it is, the Bat of Skyrim. Now a little bit about this mod is it gives the player the opportunity to become the bat with a new homestead big enough to store and display all of their treasures. It also has a cave built with everything someone would need to wage war on evil and corruption, and a set of gear to become a legend, and a bit of lore and story giving the player context and most importantly, the promise for more. The mod page reads that the backstory of this mod is there's something powerful and compelling about the Dark Knight that inspires fans to create and visualize the character in different settings. Skyrim is a perfect example. Creators, without any sort of connection to each other, put in the time and effort to create mods that give the player the opportunity to don the howl in a completely different world than that of the origin. So combining the enthusiasm for the character and the appreciation to the game, this mod wants to bring something new and personally thought out that someone would appreciate as a fan. It also wants to be stated that this is a lore-friendly mod. Now to clarify, it's not simply a Batman mod, and it's not an attempt to combine the DC Universe with the Elder Scrolls Universe. The biggest goal here is to create something inspired by this character and establishes a legendary character in the world of Skyrim by drawing from the rich history of the character and making it work with the lore of Skyrim. The mod is made to respect the Elder Scrolls aesthetic, history, cultures, and worldviews, as well as religions, and allow these aspects to influence the backstory given to the player, as well as inform the decisions made by the player. It also includes many player preferences, including being able to choose between male and female, and other races instead of prioritizing one. This isn't just plopping Batman into the world or cosplaying as him in particular, but rather guiding the player character into becoming the Bat. Now in order to get all these items in the house itself, you have to do the quest that goes along with it, and to start the quest you simply just have to sleep. There's also a lot of future plans that go along with this mod, such as further improvement and expansion of the player home and spaces, and a handful of unique NPCs including followers, mounts, vendors, and possibly a villain or two. There's also going to be a new surplus of gadgets, weapons, 
add-ons and spells, as well as armor add-ons and variants. So as you can see, you now have access to Wayne Manor and all of its different capabilities, and it's absolutely massive, and the Batcave looks phenomenal. I really like how this mod was put together, and everything that it adds is just so worth it in the end. So if you're a fan of Batman, and you're looking for something different in your Skyrim playthrough, and you want to include him, then I definitely recommend giving this mod a shot. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number one spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Bat of Skyrim. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions through there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.